Hello and welcome. Thank you for watching. I'm going to start off this episode differently today. I want to acknowledge the COVID-19 pandemic the world is facing. This week, we heard the staggering numbers of people affected by this virus worldwide. It has shaken up our nation, leaving many people feeling afraid, worried, and fearful of the future. In our own backyard, the Premier of Ontario, Doug Ford, declared a state of emergency, announcing closing the border for non-essential travel. While it is mandatory we take the precautions necessary to combat the coronavirus and keep ourselves and others safe, we also need to make sure our mental health is preserved during these difficult times. Fear itself is a virus, and we must take steps to keep positive all the while staying safe. Here's some advice to get you through your self-isolation at home. Number one, it's very important that we limit our social gatherings. If you don't have to go out, stay home. In the event that going out is necessary, practice social distancing. Make sure you're washing your hands constantly and staying home as much as possible. Number two, do things that make you happy. Listen to music, focus on your wellness and health. Spend time with loved ones. Negativity kills your spirit. Staying happy raises your immunity, so make sure you use this time to your advantage to self-reflect on work on your personal development. And number three, help others. Seniors at this time are especially in need of our help. Make sure you're being kind to people around you. If you see someone needs help, don't hesitate to help them out. We're all in this together. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. And let's talk about how people can use this right now, because this is a time right now, you know, there's it's a crisis. Now's the time to go inward and explore what's important to you in life. When you go on social media, when you watch the news, there is so much fear. So how do you, what advice do you have for people to filter facts and just fearful content out there? Don't panic, but also don't go out and be frivolous with your time because you have to also think of those people and, uh, and you know, because you could pass it on to them. Mm -hmm. What does luxury mean to you? Luxury. In India, I discovered that true luxury isn't something you buy off a shelf. True luxury is a feeling that you are the Maharani of your world. And it can be all designed around you. All the beauty is yours. All the music is yours. India showed me that luxury doesn't follow designers and brands. True luxury follows its own heart. Incredible India. Next up on the show, we have YouTuber, meditation, and mindfulness advocate, Matthew Santoro, who's going to discuss how you can keep a positive mindset during these difficult times. Matthew, thank you so much for joining us today. Of course. Thanks, Daryl. So when I scroll through social media, all I'm seeing is negativity. And when I come across your page, you're always, you have uplifting content. And I think the world really needs that right now. Let's talk about how you're doing and how are you staying positive during these difficult times? Yeah, I'm doing quite well. Um, you know, I have down days just like everybody else, uh, but I think my mindfulness practice really brings me through a lot of this. And I think, uh, I think, you know, if more people really just stay present and try not to buy into the hype and the, the fear that the media is selling right now, not all of the media, but um, you know, it, it sells the headlines like, pandemic and how to survive through this pandemic and things of that nature, people are going to click on those things and people are going to buy those articles and things. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, you have to stay aware of what's going on and educate yourself, but at the same time, don't overdo it, you know, mm -hmm. ingest 
enough that you understand what's going on and what the authorities are saying to do, but don't sit there and overindulge. Just like just like eating fast food. It's okay to eat a little bit, <laughs> but don't yeah. go overboard because you can make yourself sick. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Let's talk about you being a mindfulness advocate. How did this happen? Um, and how did you kind of shift um, from, you know, doing this? Yeah. Um, so when my YouTube career took off, um, this is the story that I usually tell people is when my YouTube career took off, it was something that I did not expect. It, I got all the things that I thought that I wanted, which included attention and money and what some people would call fame. But along with that came the realization that these things didn't make me happy. Um, in the short term they did, but people adjust pretty quickly. And you know, it sent me into a bit of a depression and that took a few years to get out of, but it wasn't until my good friend Evan from Toronto actually, shout out to uh, Eleven, <laughs> he's a yeah, great Yeah, and this CN Tower in the back. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, yeah. He introduced me to meditation and it wasn't until I started meditating that I started, you know, I started going down a path of mindfulness and meditation and um, reading a lot of books on spirituality and what the various enlightened beings throughout history have said about the true reality of what we are. And through all of that, I realized what it did for me and I wanted to become an advocate of mindfulness and meditation for other people so that they can benefit from it. Yeah, and let's talk about how people can use this right now because this is a time right now you know, there's, it's a crisis and people are not preserving their mental health because as you said, we're seeing on the news, all this fear, we scroll through social media, we see fear. So how can people use mindfulness right now? Yeah, well, this is the time. Yes. <laughs> I keep telling people, I'm like, this is the time. Yeah. You know, so many people have so much time off right now and forced time off, might yeah. I add. Um, that they're going a little squirrely. You know, people are not used to slowing down their frenetic lives. And so people don't know what to do with all yeah. of this free time because they're only used to go, 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 stress, go, go, go. And so now's the time to go inward and explore what's important to you in life. Family, friends, staying connected with them through this time, through Skype and things of that nature. Um, reading rediscovering creativity, dance, singing, whatever you're into. Um, even if it's just sitting there on the couch and watching Netflix. I mean, yeah. all of these things are things that we usually don't have time for. Mm -hmm. And that includes meditation. A lot of people think, well, I, I don't have time for meditation. But, you know, what's your mental health worth? That's what I usually mm -hmm. tell people. And mm -hmm. You know, uh, some of these apps are like Calm, for example. It's about $60, $70 a year. Mm -hmm. But we spend more than that in, in coffee in a week. Yeah. And so I highly recommend people go into whatever app store you're on, uh, download a mindfulness app to get started. Mm -hmm. And there's some nice guided meditations there. And spend 10 minutes. That's all it takes is 10 minutes a day. And sounds like a lot of people have definitely at least yeah. 10 minutes right now. right now. Yeah. So, this is a great time to invest in your mental health and invest in yourself and reevaluate what's important to you in your life and take this time to slow down because life is forcing us to slow down. It's forcing everyone to slow down. And, and so meditate a bit and sit there and really think about what's important to you and how your life is going to change coming out of this. Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, just enjoy this time off because yeah. when all of this is over, and I think this will be over sooner than later, I think it'll take about three to six months and things will start to go back to normal because it seems like the world is taking a lot of precaution right now, which is great. And once this is over, I think a lot of people are going to miss this time. So mm -hmm. you're living through history right now and enjoy this time off that you have. I know it can be difficult because people aren't earning money necessarily and they have family and kids to think about and whatever there's all kinds of different issues but try your best to enjoy it because when this is over and you have to go back to your crazy frenetic lifestyle and you're working 10 to 12 hours a day for ends meet you're going to look back and think man i wasted all that time off yeah, <laughs> so enjoy 100%. it 100 i think that's great advice you know as we were talking about earlier 
when you go on social media, when you watch the news, there is so much fear. So how do you, what advice do you have for people to filter facts and just fearful content out there? Well, going back to what I said before, I think it's important to stay informed and to know what the authorities are saying and to know where it is in your region and how you can protect yourself. But that's it. I mean, find out what you need to find out and then log off. Yeah. And I think that people are spending a lot of time indulging in fear because it's such a primal instinct that in a way it feels good. Like mm, if you yeah. look on Netflix, look no further than what's trending right now yeah. on all the streaming services. Sure. It's all contagion or pandemic yes, yes. or germ related or yeah. zombie something like mm -hmm. it's it, we like to feed into that fear because it's it's that dark part of us that that we like to feed into sometimes. So mm -hmm. um, while there's nothing inherently wrong with that because you can't appreciate the good without the bad, it's the yin and the yang, it's the light and the dark. You, that dark part of you needs to be embraced and celebrated, but not indulged in. And yes. I think that that's what people need to understand. So if you're feeling fear, it's okay and embrace that and meditate on it and try to gain a greater understanding of why you feel fearful, why mm -hmm. is it? that I truly feel fearful. Am I bringing a lot of this on myself by indulging in too much media? Mm -hmm. yeah, those are the questions you have to ask yourself. So uh, just everyone should just stay calm. Uh, you know, like the authorities are saying, if you don't have any underlying health conditions, you know, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna have either flu-like symptoms or no symptoms. Idris Elba, the famous actor, he yeah. has this, he has zero symptoms. Yeah. He, he, zero. He he. So you know he's a healthy guy. So it's the very young, the very old, and those with compromised immune systems. If you don't fall under that category, don't panic. But also don't go out and be frivolous with your time because you have to also think of those people, and uh, and you know because you could pass it on to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's great advice, and I think it's so true. On social media, you're kind of seeing who's living in fear and, and feeding into that dark side. And then there's the people that like you who are putting great content out there that's making people feel better, um, being heard, you know, having conversations like what we're having right now. I think it's, it's very, very important. Um, how do you think, as you were talking about earlier, how can people preserve their mental health right now? Because it's, it's hard to. Yeah. Um, <sighs> <laughs> Mindfulness and meditation, it's its very important. I, I, you know, I sound like a broken record a lot in a lot of the stuff that I put online, but it's because, you know, I know what it did for me and I, and I, and I see the, the shift in consciousness that's happening worldwide. Um, and so I think that, I think people need to slow down, stop, and just really observe what's happening right now. Just observe it and feel whatever feelings you're feeling and know that it's all okay, it's all natural, and it's a part of who you are. But again, don't indulge in it. And so, and so don't, just don't overdo it, just like with everything else. Everything in moderation, uh, understand what's going on, and, and also reach out to people that might need it. You know, yeah. like there's a lot of isolation going on right now. and. For me, for example, I went live today on my Instagram, which I very rarely do, but I just, I had some inspiration because I thought to myself, I'm used to being indoors, yeah. working by I myself all say, the time. I was yeah, as say. a YouTuber. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, as you probably know, you know, a lot of us are editing and shooting for ourselves. Like this is the world we live in. And that can be isolating enough, but I've been doing it for 10 years. I'm yeah. pretty used to it. <laughs> a lot yeah. of people that work their nine to fives and work with other people or work with people for a living, they're not used to this. Mm -hmm. And so reach out to those people, reach out to the elderly in your family or friends or anyone that you know, and just say, hey, how's your heart? How's your heart today? Are you doing all right? And just see what they have to say and just yeah. leave it at that. And if they wanna share, let them share and just be an open ear. And if they don't, that's cool too, but at least you reached out and, and checked on people. And I think we need to do a lot of that right now. I agree. Uh, the other day I was talking with my sister and she's like, how are you doing? And I didn't even realize that I had all this fear kind of pent up and I started talking about it. And it made me feel so much better to know that other people are afraid too. And we're all going through this together right now. Even when I was talking to the production assistant, he was like, you know, he felt better just talking about it. I think people are just kind of 
penting it up inside and, and don't want to talk about their feelings. So I think, yeah. as you said, talking about it really helps with mental health because we're having a conversation. I want to talk about something really important. I know that you had your own battle with depression and I think it's really important for our audience to know how you coped with it and what you learned from it. Yeah, um, what I learned from it was that a lot of things really. Um, I'm trying to think of what the most important thing to summarize <laughs> because I, I could go on for a long time. But I think the biggest thing I learned was through that, I really started to appreciate the things that I have. Everything really. You know, everything from family and friends to to even appreciating those down days because without those down days and we all have them you you can't appreciate you cannot appreciate the good times you know like that's really i, I i'm trying to think of i mean <sighs> gratitude really i i would say yeah. would be the biggest thing that came out of that uh gratitude for the fact that i was able to come out of it gratitude for the fact that it even happened yeah and that sounds strange to a lot of people but you know anything in, the, in my life that's happened that would be easily labeled as negative, which I don't label things as good or bad anymore because, you know, you don't know how something's going to affect your life. Mm -hmm. And so I try not to label any event as good or bad anymore. So for example, that bout of depression that I had for the three years or so that was really bad, um, I'm grateful for it. I'm yeah. grateful for everything that caused it. I'm grateful for all the people that came into my life that exacerbated it. I'm grateful for all of it because if it wasn't for that I wouldn't have reached where I'm at now which is a more conscious state I consider myself more aware more conscious mm -hmm. I meditate my mental health's better than ever and I'm able to share that with other people and if it wasn't for all of that none of this would have happened yeah and so really gratitude gratitude for all of that and uh and just understanding that as Shakespeare said, nothing is either good nor bad, only thinking makes it so. Mm -hmm. I agree a lot with that because as you said, you, you can't really appreciate life until you kind of went through that dark spot um, because it teaches you a lot about yourself. And when you're able to get through obstacles like that, you're, you become different. It changes you. You become more conscious. And meditation, I, I want to strongly put this out there for anyone watching. Meditation and mindfulness is so important especially during these times um, to preserve your mental health, not just now, but, you know, for the rest of your life. Um, what do you think this pandemic can teach us? Mm, boy, a lot. I think yeah. this pandemic is going to show us. I think when this is all done, we're going to look back and see that fear took over the collective human consciousness. Mm hmm in a way that we've never seen before. Yes. On a worldwide scale, we were collectively hive mind fearful. And that led to a lot of unnecessary consequences. The most that should be happening right now is that people should be getting sick. Of course, there's gonna be some deaths and people need to be conscious of washing their hands and social distancing. There's gonna be a slowdown in business, understandable. But as far as the stock market tanking worse than 1987, yeah. you know, when it was, it was, I think it hit as low as what the levels were in 1987. I was two mm -hmm. at that time. Yeah. Uh, that didn't need to happen. Bitcoin losing half its value did not need to happen. All the panic buying and everything flying off the shelves, like this is World War III mm -hmm. and the world is ending and people buying toilet paper for the next five years. <laughs> Yeah. No one needs to poop that much. Like, calm down. You know what I yeah, mean? And, yeah. And and if you do, you got bigger problems than the COVID <laughs> virus. But in any, <laughs> I, you know, I think we're gonna look back on this time and see that there was a lot of unnecessary panic and a lot of unnecessary consequences from that. And um, hopefully, when the next happens, because there will be a next time. I mean, we live in a world now where it's very global and people are moving around and there will be another pandemic, hopefully not another time soon. And hopefully we're more prepared for it next time globally, which I'm sure we will be. But the panic doesn't need to happen. Mm -hmm. You're going to be fine. Even if you caught coronavirus right now, COVID-19, 
The symptoms are going to be mild to nothing. The death rate is something around 0.2% mm -hmm. for the majority of the population. You're going to be fine. Yeah. I actually saw somewhere online, it says fear itself is a virus, you know, and, and that really stuck with me. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. So I think that it's really important for people to stay positive. Let's talk about... I know for you, reading has been a big part of your personal development and growth, um, especially with people self-isolating, being quarantined. This is the perfect time to pick up a book and read. So what I'm, li books? I'm literally reading Harry Potter right now. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting, I'm ripping through the whole series right now because I've got lots of time. That's great that you're using your time wisely. What yeah. books kind of helped you get through a difficult time or what's some book recommendations you have? Because I did see a picture on social media with yeah. a I think it was over 50 books in the image. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. I read 53 books in 2019. Wow. Uh, the vast majority of those were spiritual based and this year I'm mixing it up with spiritual and fantasy and fiction, which is my favorite genre. If you like fantasy and fiction, I'm looking at my uh, my bookcase right now. It's I've got 150 books on it waiting to be read at the moment, but I would have to say I mean, I'm waiting to read Lord of the Rings. I'm, re I'm waiting to read uh, Game of Thrones. If you like fantasy books, uh, Harry Potter's fantastic. I mean, yeah. I I'm reading them right now. Like most things, the books are better than the movie. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that are not in the movie. It, you actually watched the movie and it made it seem like it was really rushed because <laughs> yeah. the book has so much detail and rich mm -hmm. detail. If you're of a spiritual nature and maybe you need some self-help during this time, I mean, anything by the author Osho, there's a mm -hmm. book called Trust by Osho that is one of my all-time favorite books. It's essentially just trusting everything, trusting the universe, trusting other people. Why living in a trusting mindset is the best way to live despite the risks of potentially being hurt, the inevitability in many ways of being hurt. Um, the Five Second Rule, uh, I think by Mel Robbins is fantastic. Unlearned by my friend Humble the Poet, as Daryl, you probably know Humble. Yes, yes. I'm from Toronto. Um, Power versus Force mm -hmm. is a phenomenal book. It's a bit of a longer one, mm -hmm. but a very good read. Anything by Thich Nhat Hanh, he's actually my favorite, um, one of my favorite authors. He actually doesn't write his stuff. He's a Buddhist monk wow. who founded a monastery in France called Plum Village. I actually have... Wow. Uh, yeah, I got, a, I got a bunch of tattoos. I, know, but, I, uh, saw, actually, I saw you have a couple new tattoos there <laughs> yeah I've got it oh good. boy I've, I've, uh, I've really ramped it up but this is this says I have arrived mm. and this is the actual writing on the front of the monastery called Plum Village that he founded he's mm -hmm. a Buddhist monk that was kicked out of Vietnam uh, during the war for speaking out against the war and the Americans thought that he was a spy for the Vietnamese and the Vietnamese thought that he was a spy for America because he was so neutral. No one believed that he could be so neutral. And so mm -hmm. he was actually expelled from the country. And uh, he actually just got to go back now and I'm and I'm look, cause his health is failing. And I'm actually looking forward to going to Plum Village. I was actually going to go soon, but all this happens. So yeah. I can't go to Europe right now. But yeah, I mean, spirituality is super important to me. And uh, I mean, I know you asked about books, but like I've, no. these are all spiritual based. I mean, I've got, yeah. this is the, the Wuji and Taoism, the Lotus and Buddhism, the crown chakra and Hinduism. Wow. Uh, this is the four noble truths that the Buddha taught, um, written in Chinese characters. We've got Christ here. Oh wait, eh. We've got representing <laughs> wow. Christ. We've got, uh, death is an illusion because, uh, you know, we never really die. So mm -hmm. we, we, uh, we just transform our, our physical being. So mm -hmm. those are some books that I would recommend. Um, I think more people need to read. It's yeah. become one of my favorite things in the world. Mm -hmm. And it also helps with staying present because you're forced to sit there and read. It's not like it's not like listening to an audiobook. People say, oh yeah, I listened to that audiobook. I said, no, 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 it's not the same thing. Because when you're listening to an audiobook, you can be doing other things and people are often doing other things. They're working out, they're running, things like that. So mm -hmm. read a book. It's good for your brain. Yeah brain food and it's completely different than listening to an audiobook because it forces you to stay present. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. I love reading. Um, I go to the personal development section in the library and I'm just, I'm there all the time. And um, the last yeah. question I want to ask you, um, we previously discussed, you were talking about, I think this is important, and we talked about the law of attraction and the coronavirus yeah. and you said something really interesting. So 
Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, so before we went live, uh, Daryl and I were talking about how you know, she manifested her show. And yeah. I absolutely believe that. You can manifest anything and we do manifest things in our lives whether we, whether we realize it or not. Mm -hmm. And manifestation is when you believe something and you talk about something so much and you put so much emotion and so much of yourself into it that it becomes a reality. Mm -hmm. This can work for or against us as humans. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's working against us because so many people are engaging so much emotion of fear and belief that they could get it into the coronavirus that it's actually helped propagating the virus around the world. Yeah. And, and so in the same way that if somebody has something like cancer, they shouldn't be talking about cancer at all. They shouldn't be saying things like, oh, I hope I, I get rid of this cancer or I hope I don't get the coronavirus or, oh no, I think I do have it. The universe does not distinguish between, oh, I want it or I don't want these things. Mm -hmm. All that it hears is what you're talking about. Yeah. And so what we should be talking about, as well as, of course, the precautions in the news and things like that, we should also be talking personally and with our family and friends mm -hmm. about, thank you, God, or if you don't, if that's a heavy word for you, use the word universe or love or source energy, whatever works best for mm -hmm. you watching. But Thank you, universe, for continued health. Thank you for the fact that I don't have a cough. Uh, thank you for the fact, actually, no, that wouldn't work because you'd be, all the universe here is, is cough, right? Yeah. So it's the same thing. Thank you for the fact that I'm healthy. Thank you for the fact that I can walk. Thank you for the fact that my lungs are working well. Thank you for all of these things. And put a positive spin on it because the universe only hears health, happiness, wealth. So it doesn't distinguish between yes and no. So mm -hmm. just keep that in mind because your words have power. Yep. And if you're a Christian, it even says in the Bible, in the beginning was the word. Mm -hmm. And so God is the word. And again, if you're not Christian, I, I'm, not even, I'm not even of any one religion. I'm just speaking from one sect. There are other things. There's examples of that in Buddhism as well. Mm -hmm. And so um, just be careful with your words because your words have tremendous power. I agree with everything you said. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. I really appreciate it. And it's been yeah. very insightful. And I, I know that our audience will appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. And thanks for having me on. And if yeah. you want to do this again, I'd be, I'd be honored. But yeah, I'm great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as through iPhone and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.